February 1st, 5.48 a.m. at East Oakland Hospital in California. He was the son of famed martial artist and actor Bruce Lee and Linda Lee Cadwell. His early life was spent between Hong Kong and the US due to his father's career. It was during this time, bouncing between American and Cantonese movie sets, that Lee took an interest in acting. But unfortunately, it wouldn't take long for his life to experience tragedy. In 1973, when he was eight years old, Lee's father died of cerebral edema, a buildup of fluids in the brain in Hong Kong under mysterious circumstances. Bruce was 32 at the time. After the death, Brandon moved to Los Angeles with his mother and sister. As a teenager, Brandon got into trouble frequently and dropped out of high school several times. He struggled with his identity and having to train in dojo displaying photos of his father constant reminders of the tragic and premature death. According to Jeff Imada, one of his teachers, this led Brandon away from martial arts in favour of football. Both would reconnect later in their film careers, with Imada working as stunt and fight coordinator in several of Lee's upcoming films. In 1983, four months prior to his graduation, Lee was asked to leave Chadwick School for misbehaviour, and later that year, Lee received his GED from Muralest High School. He later spent a year at Emerson College in Boston, studying drama. While Lee didn't take to college, he definitely enjoyed acting, continuing to pursue a career and eventually embracing martial arts and his heritage back into his life. Around this time, he would go on to make his first feature film, Legacy of Rage, acted in Cantonese and filmed in Hong Kong. Additional roles would include Kung Fu, the movie, with David Carradine, wherein he played a deadly assassin and made an impression with his powerful fight scenes. Lee also made three action films, Laser Mission in 1990, Showdown in Little Tokyo with Dolph Ludgren, and Rapid Fire with Powers Booth. It was in the fall of 1992, during publicity for Rapid Fire, another upcoming film, that Brandon would land his infamous role. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, just sometimes, the crow could bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. The Crow told the story of Eric Draven, a musician raised from the dead by a supernatural crow to help avenge his death and the rape and murder of his fiance. To look the part, Lee went on a strict diet for weeks before shooting in order to remove a lot of his bulk. Lee also focused on cardiovascular exercise and did repetitions on lighter weights to elongate and stretch his muscles and did aerobics to lose belly fat rapidly. The film crew were impressed with Lee's dedication and performance. Towards the end of production, with eight days of shooting remaining in Wilmington, North Carolina, Lee prepared himself for a scene in which Eric Draven is shot and killed by Funboy, played by actor Michael Massey. Before the scene, on March 31st, 1993, Massey believed the prop gun he was handed was loaded with blanks. Unbeknownst to the crew or Massey, however, the tip of a 44 caliber bullet had become lodged in the barrel of the gun weeks before, and then the scene began. After the prop gun was fired, Lee collapsed on the set, falling forward instead of backwards as he was supposed to according to the script. When the crew stopped the scene, they initially thought Lee was joking, as he often did during filming, but when he didn't stand up and started breathing heavily and bleeding profusely from his abdomen, the morbid reality slowly settled in. Lee was immediately rushed to the New Hanover Regional Medical Center in Wilmington, North Carolina. Attempts to save him were unsuccessful, and after six hours of emergency surgery, Lee was pronounced dead at 1.03 on March 31st, 1993. He was 28 years old. The fragment of the dummy shell was not discovered until later on. The bullet pierced Brandon's abdomen, damaging several organs and lodging in his spine. Lee's mother, Linda Lee Cadwell, 
filed a civil lawsuit against the studio for negligence. After a months long investigation, Jerry Spivey, the district attorney on the case, announced in September 1993 that he would not bring the negligent homicide charges against the film production company, Crow Vision. Spivey noted that while negligence was a factor in Brandon Lee's death, there was no evidence of criminal wrongdoing. It was eventually settled out of court between both parties. Despite Paramount opting out of distribution, The Crow went on to gain a cult following and grossed $94 million in the box office as audiences turned out in droves to see Lee's final performance. Michael Massey, the murderer, was left devastated and he took a lengthy sabbatical. He continued to be haunted by the incident and moved away from acting for a year afterward. Until his own death of stomach cancer in 2016, aged 64, Massey cited he would never watch The Crow. A private funeral was held by Brandon's family, attended by only 50 friends and family, including his fiancée, Eliza, and her family in Seattle on April 3, 1993. As he didn't have a will or burial plans, Brandon's family decided to bury him at Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle, in a plot next to his father Bruce, who died nearly 20 years earlier, originally reserved for Linda Lee, Brandon's mother. Brandon's gravestone is supposed to represent the true love between Brandon and Eliza, and how the tragedy of his death separated their mortal lives together. His epitaph reads, Because we don't know when we will die, we get to think of life as an inexhaustible well, and yet everything happens only a certain number of times, and a very small number really. How many more times will you remember an afternoon of your childhood? An afternoon that is so deeply a part of your being that you can't even conceive of your life without it. Perhaps four or five times more, perhaps not even that. How many more times will you watch the full moon rise? Perhaps 20, and yet it all seems limitless.